Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to talk about the comic book industry. It's kind of a crazy time for the comic book industry. It seems like everything is up in the air. Mm -hmm. uh, I've done videos on how Dark Horse is looking to sell itself off to Hollywood mm -hmm. uh, to survive. Because, you know, I don't think comic publishing is making as much money as it used to. Um, there's word today that Oni Press, which is now Oni and Lion Forge, because they had to merge. Oh, that's right, I remember, yeah. Yeah, they had to merge to survive, and now they're going with Lunar, uh, too. And I don't know if they still have a deal with Diamond or not, but, like, everything is up in the air. And, uh, Image Comics is now rumored to be getting the Transformers and G.I. Joe licenses. IDW is rumored to have lost the Hasbro licenses after, like, what, 15 years? Mm-hmm. And well, they weren't making they weren't making ones that sold. So. No, they weren't. I, I guess the numbers actually had done better in recent years. But I mean, really, those books, I don't care who publishes them. I think you basically hit a ceiling on the number of people that want, you know, licensed Transformers, G.I. Joe, My Little Pony comics. And, uh, you know, it is what it is. But uh, I'll know, do Gem and the Holograms. There you go. We'll do Gem. Yeah. Clownfish <laughs> Comics. We'll do Gem. We'll do Gem. <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen. I don't know. But anyway, um. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, this seems to be the case. It was a rumor a couple days ago, and it looks like IDW is trying to hire a new executive editor. Uh, John Barber, who was the editor-in-chief and who was in charge of the Hasbro books, is now gone. So it seems like the Hasbro license is probably gone with him. And uh, now we've got rumors that Image Comics could be picking that up. Now, mm -hmm. could this have something to do with the office staff pushing to unionize i don't know i'm like you know if they're one of their things they wanted was to be able to control what books get published that was one of the main things they wanted um if they got hasbro they probably could cut loose some of the other people and be like oh i guess we don't want we, we have these other books now we don't need to push your books so oops problematic bye bye yeah i'm trying to figure out how that would work with with image because image historically has been a bunch of independent studios putting stuff out and they they did well, they're just gonna kick who they think they need to kick to the curb to keep their no to make it what they want and so these books are probably handled if this happens i'm guessing they'd be handled by like an in-house staff or something which right. would probably be part of this and they union. have the money from that so they don't need all the you know independent people that, that they have ones that they the, the staff really feel are problematic for whatever reason like you didn't like the right thing or vote the right way or whatever damn reason that week um then they can cut them loose and be like well we have money from hasbro it's it's very curious that there are rumors that they're going to land this big license and these books probably would be handled in-house at Image and it coincides with this union. Mm -hmm. Just saying, uh, it could be speculation on our part, but we'll talk about it. So before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. Guys, over 244,000 subs. <laughs> Thank you so much for the support. We do talk about the comic book industry, having worked in and around the comic book industry. No, you're lying. You're lying. You don't know anything. You're just a grifter. <laughs> owning owning Clownfish Comics, which is actually a legit company, and we're going to be publishing uh, more stuff next year. Not nearly as much as Image. No. Yet. But Give us a few years. We're, we're getting there. We're getting there. But, uh, yeah, so Grab look. Cover your butts, boys. Cover your butts. And girls. Rich Johnston was the one who actually broke the story on Transformers and G.I. Joe at least being pulled away from IDW and presumably all the other Hasbro uh, comics because I think it's all a package deal. Like, you license the Hasbro stuff, you get the whole thing, right? And, uh, you know, regardless of what you think about Rich, he does know a lot of people in the industry. And he was right in this case. Well, you know what's funny to me is he puts a question mark at the end of it, and, and, and that's okay. People understand that means maybe, possibly, maybe. You do it, and they're like, you lied. <laughs> yeah, it is very funny because uh, there was an article defending Rich on Bleeding Cool, obviously, but it was actually Jude Terror saying, you know, you can think what you want to think, but, you know, when we hear tips, we disclaim it, that it's a rumor, and we can't out our sources, obviously, well, because... Yeah, same here. And same here. But if, yeah, if you're a YouTuber... You're lying. If you're uh, a blogger, then it's the god, the god's honest truth, you mm -hmm. know. But anyway, he I was swear. he was right in this case, and regardless of what you think of him, I mean, the guy, you know, clearly has it in for some people in comics, but he does know a lot of people in comics, and he hears stuff, and this this seems to be the case. So he put this up today. Um, Bling Cool reported that Hasbro was pulling both their Transformers and GI Joe licenses in 2022, and presumably My Little Pony 
Action Force, D&D, Gem and the Holograms, and ROM, so all the Hasbro stuff. And they also have Mask and Visionaries and some other, like, D-list books. I would books. do Mask, too. Call me. <laughs> Mask would be cool. They tried to do a Hasbro no, no, universe. No, 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 I used to watch all the time. Yeah, they tried to do a Hasbro universe, like shared universe at IDW. It didn't work out very well. I think they were doing that just to try to buy more time. Like, oh, look, we'll give you some ideas that you can turn into movies, Hasbro. This will be great. And none of them really went mm -hmm. anywhere. Anyway, um, they had no clarification on those other books. The two big ones, of course, are Transformers and G.I. Joe. We also reported that John Barber, editor-in-chief of IDW Publishing, was leaving. And John Barber was a former IDW Hasbro Group editor as well as a formal, former Marvel editor, shoes seem to be falling everywhere. Well, this is comics in 2021. The shoes keep dropping. Uh, we've now learned the most likely place to find new Transformers and G.I. Joe comics later in 2022 will be Image. Image was a previous publisher of G.I. Joe comics under Devil's Due, and they published Dreamwave's uh, Transformers comics. But again, those were two separate companies mm -hmm. that published under image. So how would this work? Unless Hasbro is going to become its own studio under image. Yeah, if they do that, image. well, you know, if they had their own thing that was like an outside company that was, you know, under the umbrella, okay. But if they're going to have an in-house team and start hiring people in-house, that's going to be completely different than what they normally do. Yeah. From and, my understanding. And would that be a shift at Image Comics? Would Image start to transition to a more traditional comic book publisher type business model? And would that... Well, if they want to go under, they will. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, just, I'm not trying to be a bag, but I'm just saying. No, I, I think you're right. And I have to wonder... I would if, stay away from that if I were them. Because what prompted the unionization all of a sudden? You know, because again, it was like I, I was really confused by the office staff basically wanting to unionize because I'm like, you guys don't really put these books together. Yes, these... and they kept spinning it like we want you know editorial oversight. For what? You don't do you don't do that stuff. But these books pretty much come to you put together as I understand you it might from tweak it. Yeah, from various studios. They might do pre press or something like that. Yeah. Right? But like Todd McFarlane's gonna hand you a completed product and you're gonna, you know, print it and distribute it. So I'm like, what what exactly is the catalyst after all these years? This is the year you decide you want to unionize. And if they had something like this going on, that they were going to change up the business model, you know, that that would definitely give them reason to be like, oh, we're going to work so much harder to, to handle these uh, Hasbro books in-house or whatever other books in-house. And we want paid more for that. Yeah. You know, that's the only thing I can think of because yeah. there had to have been something. There had to have it's, been one catalyst. Weird. I mean, that... it completely could be coincidental. It, it could mm. be. But it is a little weird. It's I'm not gonna. Weird. I'm not gonna lie. It's a little strange. Um, so yeah, Dreamwave. They went under, and they, apparently they owed Hasbro millions of dollars. Oh really? I didn't under. know that. Uh, presumably there will be some added protection this time. Image Comics is best known these days as a publisher of solely creator-owned yes, comics for a reason. with various studios. That's not always the case. I don't know whether the production will be through an existing partner studio that publishes, such as Top Cow, McFarlane, Silverline, Highbrow, etc. One of the ones that are set up to do that, yeah. Yep, it may be set up like an independent studio through Image, such as the Netflix-owned uh, Miller World, or these new creator imprints, such as the uh, former... Uh, IDWEC, Chris Rawl, and Ashley Wood, or something else. I, I think they're going to, if this is true, either Hasbro is going to set up their own Hasbro Studios, maybe John Barber is going to go there, or they that are... That makes sense. Yeah, or they are going to, you know, start doing more books in-house. I just think it makes more sense to, to start an independent studio, given that it's Image. But, you know, if it does go in-house, then I would then I'd definitely be going, hmm, you know, about this whole... Uh, unionization thing. If if they just make it a separate city, which there are several places like they mentioned that it could go to that would still remain independent. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to think anything of it really. But if it does go in house, I, that would be a little weird. It would be very weird, and because I think you can make a better case for uh, Marvel and DC employees to unionize than than. Well, yeah, because they're the they're the ones it. actually doing the work. I mean, I'm sorry, they actually take we we need we need better working conditions when we cut your checks. That's what they, they literally said that. We are doing some book editing, cutting your checks. We make sure everybody gets paid. 
order in some copies. Yeah, and, and I mean, and, and like some like again, uh, some of the things they were saying that they wanted, I, I I think made sense. Like they want clear, you know, duties listed and things like that because we've been in positions where people got let go and then you got dumped on top of work and no more pay. Um, so I kind of can understand that to some level. It was the whole I want to control what books are done because nebulous reasons. I might not like you. You might be a no good Nick now because I said so. That I was like, wait a minute. Yeah, and that was coming. I think out of the Warren Ellis situation um, because there are allegations against Warren Ellis, and I think they were like, well, we want the the, the ability to you know not publish these books or not work There's on these allegations books. against a shit ton of people. But the difference is only some of them you get you, you know get on to bleeding you know cool or uh, get yeah. outed, and other ones are on you know in the back channels and everybody's whispering, but they don't actually you know call these people out. And they're not always dudes either, I want to point out. Well, yeah, that was – that. it was really interesting because there was a female publisher from Canada. Was it Bedside Press? Mm -hmm. That had nothing to do with this situation. No, no, no. I'm saying. But, like, a lot of the comic book sites would not talk about her. And actually, Comics Beat put a story up, and then they took it down because they didn't want her to get attacked. No, they said that was so the victim wouldn't get Oh, harassed. okay. But the victim went out and told their story, and they, they you know, it was already out there. It was already out there. It wasn't going to yeah. be an harassment for them. But I'm just saying, there's there's all kinds of shitty behavior. Uh, people, you know, stealing stuff, people doing shitty things, a whole way around. I mean, y'all heard rumors, you know, but you never see that stuff getting covered in the news a lot of times. But certain people get covered. I just think crap, bad behavior should be called out no matter who it is. Well, I mean, that was, you know, kind of what happened with uh, Sony. You know, I did the video this morning on Sony, uh, one of their VPs for PlayStation uh, Network, got busted over the weekend trying to solicit a 15-year-old. You told me. I'm like, it was It was a sting. I mean, it was a Chris Hansen type thing. It was a setup. But the reality is, is that apparently this guy's been out there looking for... What you shouldn't be doing. You know, young booty. And uh, IGN at first refused to cover it. They said he wasn't notable enough, but he was one of the VPs of the PlayStation Network for like eight or 10 years. Yeah. And uh, they had no problem going after, you know, people that worked on a, develop a, a team of developers. Like one individual they didn't like was on this team for Hogwarts and they went after yeah, this guy. Yeah, I remember that. You know, and their editors like, yeah, we're not touching this because we don't even know who this guy is. And Bullshit. And uh, they eventually caved and they did run the story after everybody else ran it. But you know, they're probably looking at this like, shit, Sony's one of our biggest advertisers. But that's just it. You know, the, you, the, the problem is, is that some people get out and other people don't, and that's a problem. And it's like, first of all, you need proof before you go out there and out people anyway, in my opinion. Yeah. And two, um, you know, it's just, it's just like they, they only if, if you're someone they like, they protect you. And if you're not, if there's someone they, that, that they don't like, and it could be something as stupid as, I thought you voted the wrong way. You might not have said that who you voted for, but I, I implied by, you know, a couple comments you made or who you followed or who your friends follow that you follow them. So you're they're all bad. You're on you're showing up on the blockchain because, you know, to three friends twice removed follow the like EVS or something. You know, yeah. it's it's ridiculously stupid. Yeah, this whole thing is stupid. And I think comics are gonna get a lot stupider, um, for sure, before they get better. I, I mean, look, the direct market's in shambles right now. We've got Oni you know, I mean, they are just hanging on by their fingertips. Mm -hmm. I mean, they had to merge with Lion Forge, which is like the bottom of the barrel. And do you remember that there was a shitstorm over that because when they had they had to, you know, had redundancies, people got let go, and they were trying to say it was racism. Oh, it was racism because some of the people that were newer employees just happened to be not white, and it was, it was racism. racism. Yeah. Um, I, what I don't understand is where did the Scott Pilgrim money go? Because they were making all kinds of money off Scott Pilgrim. For years, and then it just like. Well, I would hope it went to the creator, but it probably didn't. It probably didn't, but <laughs> like so. apparently that money dried up, and then Oni got got really really woke in the last couple of years. Uh, then they merged with Lion Forge, and Lion Forge. I don't even understand. You can how. sell up most of these publishers, but with they got really really whatever in the last few years. Oh yeah, yeah. So I mean, it is what it is. It'll be interesting to see how this plays out. It'll be interesting to see. Where it, where the Hasbro stuff goes in 2022, and if it goes to independent studio, which would make sense for Image, or if they start their own in-house team out of nowhere, and you know, unionize time. Yeah, I was gonna say then the union makes a hell of a lot then more sense. Well, they'll push it. They'll push the union through for, with that. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Because um, they're getting, they're having more work foisted. Upon everybody them. is complaining that you know, are saying, they're pointing out that when they're yelling about union, they're like, "But you don't, you aren't the creatives that do it," and people keep pointing that out. And said, so, "Well, fine, we'll just put creatives there too." Yeah, 
So yeah, at that point, there's nothing separating Image from other comic book publishers. They're just another comic book publisher mm -hmm. making corporate comics. So let's hope they don't do that. They will. <laughs> They're desperate. They we'll will. find out pretty soon. Uh, so we're gonna wrap this up. Yep. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.